Hello and welcome to the video. My name is Jeremy and this is the Strong Warriors Kingdom free series on your healthy mind, body and spirit. One way to achieve a healthy mind, body and spirit is by meditating and studying the Word of God. Uh, it's interesting, I think, that the Word of God and the Gospel is basically the complete opposite of what this global agenda is out to achieve at the moment. They want complete domination of your mind, body and spirit. They want complete control of everything, which is the why they're going down the path that they're going. They basically want to turn us into robots that don't think for ourselves, that are completely dependent on the system. Whereas the gospel and the word of God is basically the complete opposite of that, which is why they want to get rid of it and have given it so much strife and so much uh, bad news in the mainstream media as well, all uh, put together by this globalist agenda. Uh, so like I said, it's the complete opposite of what they're looking for because it teaches the gospel and the word of God teaches you all about how to live in harmony, how to live a generous, prosperous, happy life, uh, being grateful for the things that are going on in your life as well and the people around you. Uh, it also teaches how to be coming together as communities to work together in harmony as communities to um, create a better life for yourself as well. Tomorrow's lesson is going to be all about on faith. Today we've got um, all about uh, giving back to God. And it says here, uh, Michaela 3.10 says, put, try it, put me to the test. It says here, um, faith only works when it becomes the language you speak and the attitude you maintain. Now, the enemy doesn't want you to know that because when you do, you will start thinking about what's possible. So there you go. That's another little tip on how to um, create a healthy mind, body and spirit. As I mentioned, there's been some interesting lessons lately. There's been lessons on good leadership, um, walking by faith. There was two series there on problem solving. Another one about um, caring for others. Uh, yesterday's one was quite good. I talked about how um, hanging out with elderly people has been great as well. That was how to live wisely and well. When you um, and I went into a bit of a story about the prayer group that I belong to and how I've made some great friends belonging to the prayer group. Uh, and part of the prayer group, there's people in their 80s, uh, 70s, and 80s. Um, with a world of knowledge, with uh, lifetimes of experience. And when you can go to them and have a talk to them about what's going on in the world, what's going on in life, have a prayer about it, it is one way also to help create a healthy mind, body and spirit. Little groups like that are all over the place, all over through the, uh, through the town. It's a matter of um, doing some research or coming to some people to find out how you can become involved in something like that as well. It's basically like having a, um, a free counselling session that you go to once a week where you get to talk to um, people with all sorts of experience and all sorts of knowledge. Um, there was one, a good one here as being a good listener. I went into um, how uh, Franklin Graham is coming to town, which is the big event, which is part of the reason why I've decided to do this Your Healthy Mind, Body and Spirit uh, series is because at the start of November, the Franklin Graham, the Graham Foundation are, are doing a massive crusade all through New Zealand and this is part of the reason why uh, we need to get the word out there about this as well. There's going to be a huge uh, concert coming up at the start of it followed by the words of wisdom and the words of the gospel as well. So it's going to be an awesome day out, all completely free. Last time or in 1959 when um, Billy Graham came to town he had over 300,000 people uh, attend his event throughout New Zealand and at that time the population of New Zealand was only around about 2.5 million. Uh, I even went to a prayer meeting group the other night, um, a city called the Citywide Prayer Meeting where they had about five or six local churches come together also in support of this uh, God Loves You Tour that's coming up in November. So that was quite exciting. But look, I'll get into the word of the day today. Today it's all about be a cheerful giver. And it says here, Michaela 3 uh, 10 says, try it, put me to the test. Guard your heart against believing that your money is something you earned all by yourself. If you struggle to give to God, it might be time to ask yourself, have you become more attached to the gift than the giver. 
uh, if you have never committed yourself to regular giving, read this. Bring all offerings into the storehouse. If you do, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. And it goes on to here to say a story about a pastor who received this letter from a couple in this church who were behind uh, with their rent and car payments and they were behind $40,000 in debt with no food in the fridge. And we just started a construction business, they say. And so when you challenged us to give a regular offering, offering as part of our commitment to God, we thought, how can we give what we don't have? Nevertheless, we decided to go ahead and honour God by giving sacrificially. The very first week, we met a contractor who asked us to build a house with more to follow. Now we no longer questioned how we fulfilled our commitment to God. In fact, we increased our giving. And if the story ended there, it would still be a good one. But you can't outgive God. Through a series of definitely, uh, definely orchestrated events, we went from being regular renters to being homeowners. And today we're enjoying financial blessing. And even though the story is all about trusting God, on reflection, we're still trying to answer one question. What exactly was it that we sacrificed? So again, I had done a, a, a talk a few days ago as well about the power of giving as well and how uh, I ended up taking some um, uh, grapefruit because it's grapefruit season at the moment. I took some grapefruit and um, some celery around to a friend's place um, and uh, I ended up getting uh, given a full sausage casserole meal with mashed potatoes and stuff in the end as well and a few chocolate biscuits and things to take with me something that was completely unexpected I just had some excess um, grapefruit and things like that that I needed to give away and I didn't want to see them go to waste so um, that's the way it tends to work when you give um, people like to give back and there's they find ways of helping you out as well knowing that you are a generous and helpful person so look that is the uh, message for the day today. Be a cheerful giver, so try it, put it to the test. And also, remember, we've got the Franklin Graham coming up. Here's a little card that I have. It's the God Loves You Tour coming up at the start of November. And here is Franklin Graham to tell you more about it. Have a great day. This is Franklin Graham. The world has changed. The pandemic has changed all of our lives. I'm not sure if we'll ever be the same, but the need for the gospel hasn't changed. And I'm looking forward to coming to New Zealand to preach and to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the God Loves You Tour. I want people to know that God hasn't turned his back on us, that God loves us and cares for us, and he's prepared a way for us to be with him in heaven, and that's through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. We're coming to preach the gospel, the good news that God loves sinners, the good news that Christ died for our sins, the good news that God raised his son to life. If we put our faith and trust in him, we can have that same hope of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I would like to encourage you to get involved uh, become a volunteer. Uh, look how you can be involved in the bus ministry, bringing friends to this event. We'll be going through the south, all the way to the north, and we're coming to preach the good news. So get involved and begin to pray. Pray for your country. Pray for the lost. Pray for your community. And that the power of the gospel would transform the hearts and lives of many in New Zealand this coming year. God bless you. Looking forward to being with you. I believe that we are having more home moral teaching. I believe the fear of disease is great. I also believe that we're in the midst of a spiritual and religious revival. Scientist or professor, you have to spend years of study. You so, you so study and you reap professionally. There was a hillbilly from the south who felt lost at Times Square, New York. So he asked a young fellow with a long beard, how, is the, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And snapping his fingers, the bearded man replied, practice, man, practice. <laughs> and to be a great musician like Pavarotti, you have to practice passionately and perpetually.